So model, model selection and model evaluation. And we've, we've seen this, um, this question a little bit. We've seen, we've seen answers to this question earlier on how to decide which model best fits your data. Model selection problem. We just talked about um, information criteria like the AIC and the BIC. Uh, this is the ICAPIA information criterion. And there's the Bayesian information criterion. So this is some like penalized likelihood ratio. You can use that. You can do things like compute the Bayesian evidence and odds ratios. We saw that's the, the Bayesian equivalent in some senses of this approach. And then there are things like holdouts and cross-validation, where you say, I'm going to fit on 90% of my data and then test on the rest and, and see how, how well my model does. Um, in, in machine learning, uh, this is the most common approach by far, is to use cross-validation on your models. Um, that's just... I don't know why exactly that is. You can, you can certainly compute AIC and BIC on these. Uh, most of the machine learning models are frequentist rather than Bayesian, so you can't really do the odds ratios in most cases. But the cross-validation is nice because all you have to do is throw data at your, at your algorithm and you get out some sort of estimate of the, of the result. So machine learning is very data-driven in that sense. Um, so what we're going to do here is take a look at, at some, of these, some of these validation techniques and validation metrics. Um, actually, I'm going to, we went over some of this stuff yesterday. I want to, just to make sure we get to this, I want to go down to cross-validation. So, um, wait a second. Oh yeah, so sorry, I wanted, I wanted to go here. Yeah, I'm confused about what I was doing. Sorry about this. Oh yeah, so let me just let me just say this quickly because it's it's an important thing. Um, when you when you're looking at a uh, at how well a model fit does, often what you'll what you'll end up doing is com comparing like the the true value to some predicted value. And um, I thought I'm. Do I have an old version here? I'm a little bit, a little bit, a little bit confused. I thought I had something else. This is what happens when you uh, prepare the night before. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll run through this. So, so here's, here's an example of a data set that's. Um, that's very biased, but you can't see it. Let's try making this a little, a little bit. This is an example of a data set that's unbalanced. So this is one thing to keep in mind. If you were, if you were trying to, to trying to guess um, how well, if you're trying to see how well it, how well your model did on this data set, on this classification problem. Um, here, ninety-five percent of the points are purple and 5% of the points are yellow, right? So let's say you have a classifier that's, that, um, given any data point, says that the label is purple. Then how, what's your accuracy on that classifier? 95%, yeah. So you have a really accurate classifier, right? You, you call all these points purple, and you get this, get this per perfect result out. So um, this, this is... Just to motivate the fact that if you that accuracy is not always the best way to determine how well the model is doing. If you're interested, if, if these are galaxies and these are the high redshift galaxies, and you want to find high redshift galaxies, you know maybe one out of a million galaxies is high redshift or something like that, depending on how you put it off. So if you label all galaxies low redshift, you're accurate to within one part in a million but you're completely missing everything that you're looking for. So accuracy is not always the best way to evaluate a model. But there are these, there are these other ways to do this, which, um, which are used commonly in astronomy. So the accuracy we saw is the correct labels divided by the total samples, right? And that's, when you have an unbalanced problem like that, this, that's bad. A better way to look at it is something like the precision or the recall. So the precision is the number of 
true positives, so it's the number of, um, here it would be the number of yellow points divided by, the number of true yellow points divided by all the ones that you call yellow points. So it's basically the, the fraction the fraction that you observe that you say are correct. And the recall is kind of is slightly different. Instead of looking at the false positives, we're looking at the false negatives here. So the recall is a way of saying, out of all the ones I'm interested in, out of all the like, yellow points that exist, how many of them I, am, I, uh, am I actually finding? So um, I, I just wanted to point this out to you really quickly because um, often when we're looking at validation, we're, we're tempted just to go straight to the accuracy. But there are all these other, um, all these other metrics that you can use that are a little more useful in certain situations, especially when you have these unbalanced data sets. And then if you want to somehow combine the pre precision and the recall together, a good way to do it is this F1 score, which is just precision plus recall divided by or precision times recall divided by this, this sum of them. So often in astronomy, I think the precision is known as the, one of these is contamination and one of these is completeness, and I always have to think about which one it is. So the recall is the, uh, is the completeness. It's how, how much, how many of the true values we're actually seeing. And the precision is the opposite of the contamination. It's how it can, Basically, the precision is a me measure of how uncontaminated our data set is uh, when we ask for those yellow points. But um, one way you can get those with your with Scikit-Learn is to look at uh, look at the true values versus the predicted values for whatever you're doing, and you can use the classification report. It'll actually give you the precision and recall for these sorts of things. So this is something that you, you may have seen yesterday. But what I really wanted to get to here was um, the notion of cross-validation. So we, we saw before that the, the best, one of the ways you can do cross-validation, one of the ways you can validate your model is to split your data into a train set and, and a testing set. So here we have this data, um, you know, we're looking at, at this data right here. This is two-dimensional X data with some, with some different labels. One way that you can do this, you can do a validation, is to, you, to split this into a testing set and, and a training set. And then what we do is we um, predict, we fit on one set here and predict, on, and predict on the other one. And we fit on the second set here and predict on the first one. And then this gives us a, um, a precision score for, for each of the data and we can kind of estimate estimate what the precision score is based on that. Um, but a better way to do this is through something called cross-validation. So this is what, um, what Luis is talking about, where what we've done here is we've, we've taken this, uh, this data, and we call this the training data, and we call this the testing data, and we fit a model based on the training data and predict for the test data what the y is. And then we can do it this way too. We can fit a model based on the testing data and predict what the y is for the training data right there. And then we can uh, compare these two and ask how well the model's doing that way, ask how well the model's doing that way, and then that gives us an idea of how our model is performing, right? But similarly, what we can do is, uh, instead of doing two splits, we could do you know, multiple splits. And we can say, we're going to train on all this data and fit a model, and then predict the y value for right here. And then comparing these two, we get an idea of how well our data is doing. And this is, this is known as, uh, as k-fold cross-validation, because you have k different sets of data, and you're predicting for each one individually. Um, and Scikit-Learn gives you a nice way to, to do this using the cross-val score. So here what we want to do is a, a two-fold cross-validation on our, on our estimator up there. So we're trying to, trying to figure out what the best estimator is to fit this particular data set. And if we do a two-fold cross-validation, we find that, the, that here we're scoring on the precision. We can 
for the first fold, with this, with these basic parameters here, we can find a precision of about what, 0.8, something like that. If we do multiple folds, here we can do a tenfold cross validation. Actually, tenfold doesn't work very well because we get perfectly per perfectly precise in some cases and, and not very precise in others. So we're splitting the data apart so much. Anyway, so this, this gives us uh, an idea of our precision, about our ac accuracy. Um, as we're seeing here, we, we're very, very accurate all the time, but we're not always very precise. And we can um, get the, the recall as well if we do it that way, and figure out how well, how well we're recalling our data. So this, I just wanted to show you this because this is a way that instead of writing a loop over all your data and, and doing this training and, and testing and fitting, instead of writing that loop, you can just do it all at once this way. So the, then the thing that you want to do is you want to change this. We could do kernel equals RBF, and we could ask how well that's fitting. You do kernel equals linear, and we could ask how well that's fitting. We could say kernel equals poly, and ask how well that, that does on our data. Right? It's, it's just a way to, um, to quickly check, quickly validate your model given some sort of parameter. So RBF, and let's do gamma equals 2. Right? So we can check as a, function, as a function of these individual parameters, 0.1, we can check how well we're doing on these folds. So this is this is generally how um, how you validate models. You use use this cross validation, figure out how well a particular model is doing, and um, you get out the result. We could do uh, if we wanted to, we could take the mean of this and get a single a single value. Right. So. We'll have, we'll have a chance to take a look at this by, by changing the gamma and everything. We get uh, we get these different values all the way through. We get, and what we want to do eventually is to to search the space of all the different parameters here, all the different model parameters, and maximize this precision or recall or what, what have you. So you can do this with a for loop, right? You could do for i in the range, whatever, and you could set um, Gamma equals some. You can you can set a set a different value of gamma for each one of the loop, but that's not something you want to do. You, want, you don't want to write the code over and over yourself. So Scikit-Learn has this thing called grid search, which does this for you, which is really nice. So what we're going to say is that we want we have this classifier, which is the SVC, and let's make the kernel equals linear. Let's look at linear and let's look at RBF. And we have this, you know, we're going to say the C is somewhere between 10 to the minus 2 and 10 to the 2. And let's make this smaller just to see. And we can use this grid search CV like this, where we, we pass the search. We, we, the grid search is just a, just a model, basically. We tell it we're interested in this classifier, we're interested in these parameters, and we want this precision score, and we want this number of cross validations. And we fit it to our data. And we can actually find what the best parameter choice is for, for this grid. So it, it automatically goes through and searches all the combinations of these parameters and tells you what the best parameter score is for this. Um, and sometimes it's useful, too, to see as a function of what this input is, to see what the scores are. And if we print that, we can see here that we're looking for a right precision score on this with the with a RBF estimator. As we change the precision score, we see that for, for very small values of C, we get zero, so it's not fitting very well. And as we go to larger values of C, there's this nice sweet spot here that's really narrow. So for, for this particular model, we're fitting our data really, really well. And then as we go down, we get, we get less precision here. And now if we do something like, if we change this to uh, recall, we'll see that it's probably a little bit different. Yeah, so the, the best recall we can get, the best uh, you know, kind of getting the full sample of our, our rare events, the best recall score is with the C value somewhere around here. 
So this is the kind of thing that you have to do in practice. When you're trying to choose your model, you want to decide which, decide which um, metric you're in interested in. Decide what, what you're interested in for your data. Are you trying to find rare samples? Do you want an uncontaminated sample? Do you want more, most accuracy across everything? And you can do a different, different, different type of uh, cross-validation with a different score and then plot the results and sort of figure out where, what your best option is. Where are you kernel? Oh yeah, you're right, I didn't use kernel. So let's do, let's do kernel and put that in there. So now what we're doing is instead of, instead of just a single, uh, a single grid, a single dimensional grid, we're doing a multiple dimensional grid. So we're asking, as a function of kernel and as a function of C, what's the best? And it turns out here that for recall, it looks like the linear kernel is the best. Um, and I want to I want to see see what the grid uh, grid scores looks like here. This, these are all the all the options that's come out. Um, yeah, so uh, I think if we have a two-dimensional one here, it makes it a little, a little more difficult to plot this because we, we can't just do a single line. But you know, let's say instead of searching that, let's say um, we're going to set the kernel equals linear here. And we'll search on the on the other parameters on the C value, and we'll see see that for a linear kernel, as you turn C all the way up, you get um, basically very good recall. And for the precision, the precision is different. The kernel for for a linear kernel, you need a small C value for good precision. So this. Sorry, this is not very organized, but I just wanted to show you that there. That this is the way that in general you perform, in, in practice, you perform cross-validation in scikit-learn is using this, using this grid search thing. It's really convenient. You can, you can explore lots of different options. Um, questions about that, about the, this grid search and how this works? What I... Yeah, it's, it's a trade-off between precision and recall, often. And, and the way we can think about that is that um, this is something you may have seen a little bit yesterday in the, um, in the exercise, and we'll see it more today. So if you, if you want to maximize, maximize recall, like if you want to find all the yellow, if you want to find all the yellow dots and you don't care, care about contamination, you can just draw a line right here, right? And say everything below this line is a yellow dot, and you'll find all of them, but there will be a lot of contamination there. And if you care more about precision, if you say, you know, each of these is going to take 10 hours on Keck to follow up, so I want to make sure that whatever these are, that I don't get any contaminants, because that'll be really costly. Maybe instead you draw the line here, and you're, you're just interested in finding 10 of these that are really, really likely to be yellow. So this is always the trade-off in, in doing these sorts of algorithms, is trying to figure out what you're interested in. Precision or recall, you know, things like uh, it's, it's the bias versus variance trade-off, that, that sort of thing. So it's good to know that, um, that you can use different estimators, you can use different metrics to decide how well your estimator is doing. So you always want to start out thinking to yourself, what's the question I want to ask? Is that clear? So yeah, so high high recall would be like drawing your line right here and taking everything below it. High precision would be drawing your line right here. You miss some of those. You miss some of these right here, but it's it's much much better to you get a much better sample out. Of. Much more it's, or much much less contaminated sample. So mainly what I wanted to do here was show you that 
show you that this cross-validation thing that we heard about the other day, it's something that takes a lot of code to write, but, um, <laughs> but in scikit-learn there are these nice tools, this cross val score, and this grid search that lets you, lets you do that. So for any particular model, the goal is, when you have a data set like this, what you want to ask is, is what is my goal? I want, do I want precision? Do I want recall? Do I want accuracy? Do I want something else? And then you can, um, given that goal, you can choose what estimator you want to use. You think, well, maybe I'll use a support vector classifier on this. And then um, you find the model parameters for your support vector classifier that will optimize whatever goal you have in mind. And that's the one that you can then use on your data to answer the questions you have. 